Good morning, church. Pastor Linda from Bethel Thedford here. Today is Saturday, August the 15th, and this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we can rejoice because God made this day especially for you, and what you do with it is entirely up to you. But he wants you to put him first. So remember, whatever you're doing, do it all for the glory of God. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that you've ever understood or can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all glory. And we do that because of who you are. You are the only one that is worthy. You're the creator of all things. You're God all-powerful. You're God almighty, El Shaddai. You're God who provides everything that we need. That doesn't mean everything that we want, but you do provide what we need. And we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us, for the blessings that you've poured over us. We thank you for healings. We thank you for walking with us, for holding us. We thank you, Lord, for using us, and we ask that you continue to use us to reach your people. We ask, Lord, to give us wisdom in all that we do, especially these uh, last days of summer. And we thank you, Lord, for letting things open up as much as they are, and for closing things, too, for keeping the borders closed. Keep us safe, Lord. Give us wisdom. Use us for your purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the one thing we need to remember that uh, every day we're going to be dealing with people in one way or another. But we need to deal with them the way you would. And we need your help for that. And we also need to remember that we have to love you, love the Lord. Uh, Luke 10 says, uh, Luke 10, 27 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So with everything that we are, we need to love God. And the same way with everything that we are, we need to love our neighbors, love the everybody else that's out there. And it doesn't matter how old they are, how young they are, what color they are, what language they speak. The object is to love them. Now, the weather network today, it says it's 24 degrees out right now. It's a beautiful day. It's nice and warm. It's, um, I'm thinking there's, there must be pollen or something coming up in the air because I'm getting a little bit raspy. So that's usually a clue that allergies are coming around again, hitting a little bit harder. It's to be a high of 27 today. So that's going to uh, feel quite warm. It'll be uh, clear through most of the day. Tonight it's supposed to get down to 20. And we can expect a few showers because it's saying it's at 70%. And we can expect um, 2 to 4 millimeters, which isn't a whole heck of a lot. It'll be enough to uh, wet the dust. Proverbs 3. 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all that you do, and He'll show you the path to take. Don't think you know everything because you don't. The only one that knows everything is God. And that's why we count on Him, to give us wisdom. Our COVID reports, the confirmed cases in Sarnia Lampton is 331. The... Um, Increases, there aren't any increases. The deaths are still at 25. And, you know, we can re be really thankful for that. That's since um, the middle of June that there haven't been any deaths related to COVID. The uh, confirmed recovered, 295, so now we're down to 11 active cases in the area. And that's all through uh, Sarnia Lambton. Ontario report. Uh, confirmed cases, 40,565. And the new cases, it's disappointing because we're back over 100. It's at 106. 
the uh, number of deaths that, uh, due to COVID, it's uh, up one, so it's at 2,789. The confirmed recovered, 36,873. Now, good news, there's only 39 uh, cases related to COVID in the hospital. So that's improving drastically. Uh, in the ICU, it remains at 17. On the ventilator is up one, it's at 10. The active cases is up again as well. That's at 903. The uh, Canada report, there's 121,652 confirmed cases. And that, uh, we've got over 400 again on that for the day. It's at 418. Number of deaths is up by five. That's 9,020 now. And confirmed recoveries is 107,942. The active cases across Canada is up. It's to uh, 4,690. Now, everybody has already heard this, I'm sure, but I'm going to tell you again anyway. The federal government is extending the Canada-U.S. land border closure for another 30 days, so it's going to be uh, closed until September the 21st. Public Safety Minister Bill Blair made that report yesterday. The closure to non-essential travel has been in place for months, but with caseloads still high in many U.S. states, the two governments have mutually agreed to continue restricting movement across the world's longest international border. We will continue to do what's necessary to keep our community safe, Blair said in a tweet. The closure has resulted in a dramatic drop in traffic between the two countries, although essential workers like truck drivers, healthcare professionals, are still able to cross by land despite the restrictions. Canadians are still able to fly to U.S. destinations. Brian Higgins, a Democratic congressman for the New York district that includes Buffalo and the Niagara areas, said he was disappointed, but not surprised, that the border closure was extended. Higgins said, I have come to realize that the Canadian federal government response to COVID-19 was early, it was strong, and it was united. The American federal government response was slow, chaotic, and adversarial. 45% of our business at the Buffalo Niagara International Airport is citizens from Canada by and large from Ontario. Our retail economy is highly dependent on the Canadian shopper. Canadians spend 10 million a year on health care in Western New York, he said. So you see, it's not just uh, Canada that uh, counts on the US citizens for the economy. It's the same way down there. They count on uh, the Canadian um, client uh, for their economy as well. And it hurts both ways, but we both need to uh, support our own countries and we both need to follow the rules. U.S. numbers. The confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. is 5,476,266, and that's up 60,600 from yesterday. And that number um, hasn't been that high for a week, so it's moving back up for some reason too, same as uh, ours is. The deaths due to COVID-19 is 171,535. Confirmed cases recovered 2,875,147. The active cases across the U.S. is 2,000,000 429,584, hence the reason for having the borders closed, for the time being anyway. Uh, I think everybody's doing the same thing. We're waiting to see what happens when schools open here before uh, things start to open up. Well, things are allowed to open up now, but I mean, uh, before <laughs> I know with uh, the church, we're waiting to see what happens at the schools. Because you know, in a regular uh, year, that when kids all go back to school, isn't that when they all come home with a cold and the flu and everything else that goes around? Well, now we've got COVID to look after, too. 
So what's going to happen? So just be patient, sit back, stay healthy. Our scripture for today is Hebrews 2, and we're going to finish it off. We started it yesterday, so today we're going to finish it off. We're going to go from verse 5 to 18. Starting at verse 5, it is not angels who will control the future world we are talking about. For in one place the scriptures say, Where, What are mere mortals that you should think about them, or a son of man that you should care for him? Yet for a little while you made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them authority over all things. Now when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. But we have not seen, not yet seen all things put under their authority. What we do see is Jesus, who for a little while was given a position a little lower than angels, and because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. God, for whom and through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children to glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader, fit to bring them into their salvation. So now, Jesus and the others he makes holy have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. He also said, I will put my trust in him. That is, I and the children God has given me, because God's children are human beings, made of flesh and blood. The Son also became flesh and blood, for only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people, since he himself has gone through suffering and testing. He is able to help us when we are being tested. Praise God. Thank you for your word. And I also hope that that helps to explain a little bit of the mystery of God. It's not going to explain everything. You're not going to know that until we're there facing him and being a part of uh, the heavenly family. We're instructed to pray for all people. 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 to 6 says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf. Give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us, for directing us, for using us, for sacrificing for us. We thank you, Lord, for the salvation that you have offered each and every one of us. And I pray, Lord, that you give us the wisdom to accept that, I pray, Lord, that you build our faith, that you open our eyes. Sometimes we don't see. Sometimes we have blinders on. Open our eyes, Lord, so we can see the beauty of your earth, the beauty of all your creation, and also see what the sacrifice was all about, that our sins were taken and put on the cross with your son Jesus. And when we accept the message and believe it, 
that we also become your children. Lord, I lift up all of our leaders and ask that you continue to use them, direct them, help them to make the right decisions. And I'm thankful for our leaders, Lord. Doesn't mean I have to agree with everything they say and do, but I can be thankful for them and I can appreciate what they're doing. And most of all, I can pray for them. Not only the leaders in this country, but the leaders in all the countries. Lord, I ask that you hold them close. And Lord, we lift up Mr. Trump to you and ask that you speak to him. Touch his heart. Give him wisdom, Lord. Let uh, the directions that he gives be effective. And let healing come to that country. And we're thankful, Lord, that he's um, working with your chosen people, with Israel, that uh, all goes well there. Help the rest of the world to realize that if your people, if Jerusalem is blessed, then they'll be blessed as well. And there's nothing difficult about that direction. Help us, Lord, to hear your word and to follow your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians 4.3 says you are joined together with peace through the Spirit. So make every effort to continue together in this way. You should not only follow God's word, but you need to trust it in all things. Because it's there for each one of us. It's there to help us. Isaiah 41.10 says, don't worry because I am with you. Don't be afraid because I am your God. I will make you strong and I will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. Continue to just take that couple of minutes a day to pray for each other and to lift people up. You know, I get a lot of um, emails, um, some I've subscribed to. I subscribe to several lists um, of, <coughs> excuse me, devotionals and uplifting messages. You know, sometimes you just get the little verse that comes in, the verse of the day and that sort of thing. Well, the one subscription I'm on is... Um, from a young lady, Lisa Apello, and she's, um, she's a single mom. Her husband had died uh, young, and she was left with several children to raise on her own, and she's still doing that. And she dedicated her life to the Lord, and everything that she does is for the glory of God. Well, I uh, the message I got from her yesterday, her email is... Um, Oh, what's it called? Hope. Hope something. Oh, the weekly hope note is what it's called. And this is what she says. She says, I don't know what you're trudging through right now, what you're facing, what you're waiting for, but this I do know. God is always right. Our job is to trust him and not our own understanding and then to stand with hands raised and heart filled as God works in us through us, around us, despite of us. I thought that was uh, amazing. It was so right on. And that's something that we need to remember at all times. Something else is, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. And that's 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And we need to remember that we need God in all things. Zechariah 4, 6 says, You will not succeed by your own strength or by your own power. But by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty, all-powerful. God bless each and every one of you, and may God be with you until we meet again.